Here we are in episode 42 of the Simple Success Podcast. This is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. When you change you, you change everything. Today is the result of what you do every week. What's our listener anchor for the week? Their lighthouse, right? Ugh. Their one sentence takeaway. Oh, you mean that bit that goes at the top of the show notes? Yes, that bit. That sentence. That you know, thing. That psychological misconception. Oh yeah, I love the idea of talking about psychological misconceptions like this one. Or what's going to be in the next episode, episode 43. Yes, episode 43. Good one, DT. Yes, I do have a great memory. What did we talk about? Incorrect beliefs? Um, that's the one where we talk about shiny object syndrome. Would you like me to find you a memory test? Nope, not necessary. I am a great eater of beef. What? That's a line from Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. Oh, right. I noticed he didn't title any of his plays The Hot Hand Fallacy. Well, that's probably because the line wasn't created until the year 1985, according to Wikipedia. And? And Scientific American and Investopedia. Oh, okay. But he should have used that title. And he probably would have if it was around in 1602. But that's not helping anyone understand it. Oh, right. As you like it. <laughs> okay. In a nutshell, hot hand fallacy says, or purports to or say, or purports to say, that if something or someone has been successful repeatedly with their hit pattern, and they've done so in recent times, yes, that they are on a hot streak. So what does that lead to? It leads to their likelihood of being successful the very next time, according to the theory. So far, so good. Agreed. But the problem is that they put that likelihood at better than 50-50, not following. If it's better than 50-50, it means that the hot streak affects future performance, which is just not true. This is sounding kind of sports-like. Sports-like, huh? Well, that's for a very good reason. The origin of the hot hand fallacy was actually specific to basketball. The hot hand in basketball quote-unquote study, came out in 1985, done by Thomas Gelovich, one of the authors of How We Know What Isn't So, among other books, and Amos Tversky, who is credited with a lot of prominent studies like this with a guy named Daniel Kahneman. So, players are more likely to make a successful shot if their previous shot was successful. That's the idea, but what we learned is that people don't do well with random events. We'll see that more later with the coin toss example I have ready. So, as you can see, the origin of the hot hand fallacy was actually specific to basketball, and it influences a lot of decisions that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm imagining the impact on coaching. Yes, the debate about hot hand shooting certainly has had an influence on coaching decisions. The definition grew, and the research around it grew. It's obviously had a real impact. However, it is not based on real truth. I guess not doesn't seem possible to make that more than 50-50. Since when does possible matter in illusions? Right, which is part of the science behind logos. True, but as I've gotten used to saying lately, that's for a different show. Draw us all a picture of this problem. Okay, here goes. Uh, oh wait, are you, are you a sports fan? Well, not every sport, but my mind picture thing works. <laughs> right, well, fire up that picture thing now with your ideal view of a basketball court. Who do you like as a player? Oh, what does everybody say? LeBron. Great. This uh, LeBron guy, this basketball player, will say that he's made his last 10 shots in a row. Happens. That it does. But here's the thing. Hot hand fallacy says that he's more likely to make the 11th, too. That's a lot of consecutive shots. And it doesn't even consider shot difficulty. But people don't bet on that. Oh, they will. Heard of micro-betting yet? Rabbit hole, dude. You're right. But at least I know about it. Back to LeBron. Right, so he might very well make the 11. No streak of misses here, and you'd be happy with that bet. True, but I've learned something very important. How important? Important enough to tie this all into investing. Already? Oh, well, not quite. Time is important, but this is only the first break coming up. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast. Financial life coaching from a happiness perspective because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us, please head over to the support link in our written show notes. That's the words on your podcast player. There, you can choose from a $9.99 per month 
doing level of support, a $4.99 knowing level, or a basic intro level of just 99 cents per month. Whichever you choose, thank you so much for helping us do this for you. To leave us a voice message which just might see the light of day in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes. You'll go to a site where you can leave a video, audio, or text-only message, depending on how you feel at the moment. You can also send us an audio file attached to an email if you use more than just your phone for stuff. I won't repeat those links because weird. And anyway, show notes. It's all in there and it's all easy. Okay, so compare these, these fake things. Fake things? Maybe not fake. Starts with F. Oh, fallacies. Compare and make me care. Slick. That was very nice, DT. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm going to trademark that. And you know, make posters? Come uh, compare, I commanded. Right. So there's also this thing called the gambler's fallacy. The hot hand fallacy is very closely related to the gambler's fallacy. It's not the same thing. Right. It's not the same thing, but it's very closely related. And I'll explain. The gambler's fallacy focuses on the probability of heads on the flip of a coin. It's sometimes called the heads tails fallacy. I'm guessing that's a cognitive illusion that makes it not true. Not saying that, but I am saying that it goes against logic and truth. Geek. When in Rome, don't give me away, thanks. Gamblers. Imagine we flip a coin ten times, and in eight of those ten times, the coin comes up heads. The gambler's fallacy says that there are 50-50 odds of either one happening, which is true. But it should also say every time. You could say that. In this example, however, the results of the previous 10 throws have been 8 to one side and 2 to the other side. This works for heads and tails, red and black. However, the choices are identified, and they're 8 to one side and 2 to the other side. That can really wear hard on anyone's sense of randomness. But I'm guessing that gamblers don't hear that. They don't. The gambler's fallacy logic says that the future coin flips must fall on the two side and not the eight side. Why? Because it has come up fewer times than it should so far. These people are thinking that previous outcomes matter. Using fair coins? But that's not even a factor. No, it's not. But good luck with that argument. Sports again. Confusion. Not sports, DT. Even though the color commentator is insisting that they're due for a win, or they're overdue even, you know, or they're overdue for a touchdown, or a playoff win, or whatever else you want to put in there. You know something? Why, yes, DT. I do know something. That was a standard figure of speech. Oh, that's true. And my response was to show a point, that we are all subject to not thinking clearly sometimes. But that's not what I was wondering. And I'll fall for that. What were you wondering? How y'all managed to tie this one in? We know a lot about you already because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. The reason every podcast asks you this is because when you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Oh, oh and don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno. Sebo. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. Okay, so was that a challenge? Was what a challenge? Just before the break, you were wondering how I would tie this in. Yeah, to investing. This should be good. And you don't want me to tie that into the 2018 update on the study, right? No, please don't. Okay, try this statistical power on for size. In 2020, U.S. Airlines lost $24.2 billion. Much of that due to COVID. Yeah, I'll give you that. But get this, in the same year, Tesla short sellers lost $35 billion. Doing what? 
betting against innovation. So, so what's 35 divided by 24.2? 35 divided by 24.2 is approximately 1.4463. So it means that people who are betting against innovation bet more against innovation badly than all U.S. airlines lost while trying not to lose anything. And the tie-in? The tie-in is that those short sellers were going on a widespread belief they had. They had what they thought was an intuitive sense that Tesla couldn't keep on with its successful streak. And belief that it could happen is good, right? Sure, anything can go to the moon, at least in theory, but that's not what investing is, right? At least not most of investing. If you want to do the gambling thing with a few percent of the big picture, then okay. But just please don't rely on these fixed beliefs like the hot hand phenomena with your serious money. But what about the belief part? Yes, well, if you believe that the hot streak will continue and you make no preparation for that, then you'll start to invest for the wrong reasons. And make mistakes. Yes, and make mistakes. Your string of success might just end, which you don't learn from. Not always. Where's this going? <laughs> you remember what old Nap Hill said, right? He said a lot of good stuff. Yeah, but he hit this aforementioned tendency we all have with this. If you don't learn from your mistakes, you might as well not make them. <laughs> yeah, and how do you do that? You remember, and you do better the next time. And what do you do in order to remember? You practice. Right. Which leads to, all you need to do is practice, after which you'll get good. Gracias por escuchar. A la prochaine. In this Simple Success Podcast, as well as in our webinars and masterclasses, we very much want to hear your story. Well, to be real, in future episodes of the podcast, webinars, and masterclasses. And this means you. Your participation is critical to our mutual simple success. It's important to know how you think what you've thought, what you've tried, and what you've been unsure of trying. As we told you at the beginning, and as you also find in the show notes, we have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a voice message, which just might see the light of day in a future podcast. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. Together, we're going to make it great. We're going to do what even we didn't think possible. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes... Techno King, John C. Brandy, Fact Checker, Abraham Lincoln, French Consultant, Virginia Mitchell, Media Expert, Favor, Abasi Ike, Psychologist, Sigmund Freud, Rabbit Hole Advisor, Dr. Marg Parrott, Sound Designer, Guglielmo Marconi, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy, Videographer, Alfred Hitchcock, Audio Props, Les Paul, and Inspiration Goes to Napoleon Hill, Earl Nightingale, and Bob Proctor. We also have a website, and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio, or text message. But of course, you'll have to head to the show notes, either on your phone or on the web, to actually get links and stuff. I mean, I could read the URLs where you could subscribe, support, or leave one of those video or audio messages, but you really don't want me to do that. And those explicit and clickable links are in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on Podmatch, where we consider guests, as well as consider guesting on other people's pods. And really, finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams, both on freesound.org. <laughs>